morning, y'all. Uh, having a good Monday morning. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of y'all probably sleep. 7.30, I think. Should be. Uh, I, uh, yeah, man. Day by day, y'all. Take y'all time. <laughs> day by day, take y'all's time. I know a lot, of y'all, a lot of y'all probably tired from yesterday. Y'all probably watched that, that ball game. My grandma said that fool's ball game. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Hey, you like to chill, chill. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm 27. I like to chill, too. Uh, all glory, honor, and praise go to my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Don't know honor, praise, and glory go to me. Got to give credit to who it's due, Lord Jesus. Ain't nothing perfect. And we live in the world. Get hard sometimes. John 13, verse, uh, this come from uh, the Bible Gateway, the verse of the day. Drunk. I like this. Drunk. John 13, verses 34 through 35, Lord Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another as I love you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone would know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Not if you got the, the biggest church, you got a lot of followers, if you got a lot of money or whatever, you got if you love one another. Love is a hard thing to do sometimes. Why? Because people will annoy the crap out of you. <laughs> I got family and stuff. Y'all seen the TV show, Everybody uh, Love Raymond? We the black version. I got family. I love them to death. And family. They, they get in your skin sometimes. But, uh, besides family, you got the world and enemies and stuff out there too. The Lord said, love, love the people. That's a hard thing to do. But with the Holy Spirit, by the grace of God, He'll help us, He'll help make a way, show us what to do. In fact, uh, Moses, we in Exodus, I'm going verse by verse through the Bible. I don't want to get too carried away with my own little things. Uh, Moses, I think we left off in Exodus 33, I believe. Uh, yeah, we're going verse by verse through the book. We'll get through the whole thing. Uh, in Exodus 32, Aaron, Moses' brother, and the people, they had made a golden calf and, uh, and sinned against God. And they did a horrible thing. Moses... I like I like Moses, man. I like Moses a whole lot. This brother deserves an award. Yeah, he deserves an award. I'm gonna read this and then we're gonna go in. He deserves an award. Go to Psalms uh, 133. I'll be patient, Mr. Early. Yeah, Psalms 133. Psalms 133, verses 1 through 3. Got your Bibles with me. I know a lot of y'all ain't known to say amen. God bless y'all. Psalms 133, verses 1 through 3. Say, uh, Brother David said, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. I like that. Let me say it again. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like the precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Amen. Moses prayed for the people, y'all. Moses prayed for his people. He did that quite often. James chapter 5. Uh, bear with me. James chapter 5, verse 16. Uh, I could go from verse 13. James chapter 5, verse 13 to 16 say, If anyone among you is in trouble, the people is in trouble. <laughs> Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. 
and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick, sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they'll be forgiven. Therefore, this is it right here. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. <laughs> Moses prayed for his people. Second greatest commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, that's a hard thing to do. That's a very hard thing to do, I must say. Uh, but when uh, your eyes send on the Lord, then it ain't too hard at all. If I help you out with it, love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, it's a hard thing. With the help of God, Lord Jesus Christ, he helped you get through it. He'll give you a heart for his heart to, to see the people. I get mad and upset with my people sometimes, like where then you just can see, understand their framework and how they are. Exodus 33, y'all. Verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, <clears throat> Leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt, and go to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, the Morites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Justubites. <clears throat> go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you. <laughs> Because you are a stiff-necked people, and I might destroy you on the way. <laughs> the Lord told the people to go, but I ain't going with you. Because y'all are stiff-necked people, and I might destroy you on the way. One of the terrible things that could happen is God uh, turning his back on you. Bless the Lord. He said, I never forsake you nor leave you. <laughs> That's his word. He said, I never forsake you nor leave you. Now, the whole point of this, uh, the people saying this was the people should feel remorseful when God's saying that I'm not going to go with you. They should have felt sad and ashamed because God the one that brought them up out of there. Without, the pre without God in his presence being in your life, you should feel ashamed and something wrong a little bit. These are God's people. They just now made a golden calf in the image of God or uh, uh, in the image of their God or whatever. And, uh, the Lord told these people to go. Y'all take possession of the land, but I ain't going with you. Would you rather have the land or God? Because you are stiff necked people, and I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard these distressing words, they began to mourn, and uh, and no one put on any ornaments. For the Lord had said to Moses, Tell the Israelites you are stiff necked people. If I were to go with you for even a moment, I might destroy you. They take off your ornaments, and I will decide what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments at Mount Horeb. Verse 7 say, Now Moses used to take a tent. <laughs> I like Moses. Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. <laughs> it's called the tent of meeting. Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord will go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses would go to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance. Everybody used to go to this tent. But something happened when Moses used to go to the tent. And when, yeah, hallelujah. Something, something happened when Moses used to go to the tent. <laughs> Everybody else used to go to the tent, then nothing happened. But, but verse 8 say, whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance and see, and was looking, watching Moses step by step. Yeah. Until he entered the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at a distance. While the Lord would speak with Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshipped, each at their entrance to, the, to, the, to their tent. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp. But his young age, Joshua, the uh, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Moses said to the Lord, <laughs> Moses in the glory of the Lord. Moses got to see the glory of God. <laughs> it's one of two things. It's rather, we read about it in, uh, I, I, I got that wrote down. I think I can read that for you. I got that wrote down. It, it goes to this. I like this. It's rather the Lord going to show his glory. 
or he gonna gain his glory. Isaiah 42. I was gonna read this for another day, but I had a film. I might kick the jump. Y'all bear with me. Isaiah 42. Moses got to see the glory of God. Is rather the Lord gonna gain his glory on you as he did to the Egyptians? You don't want God to gain his glory on you. Because anytime somebody uses that term, gain glory, it's like a king about to show these people who he is. That's that's the only time people really talk like that. It's like on a warfare, on the battlefield. When the king usually said, I'm about to gain my glory on this or whatever. But anyway, it's rather the Lord going to gain glory, which he could do at any moment. And he will gain his glory again one day when he show up. The sky and the heavens going to crack open. Yeah. The Lord Jesus going to come down. Yeah. It's rather he going to gain his glory or you'll get a chance to see his glory. Isaiah 42, verse 8, the Lord said, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. Exodus 6, uh, verse 2. The Lord told Moses, I appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I did not make myself fully known to them. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. Another means absolutely anybody on the face of the earth, above the earth or beneath the earth. An idol is, is, an idol is an image, a picture, a statue, whatever you can depict or representation of a God or as an object of worship. A person, a thing that is greatly admired, loved, or revered. Anything that takes the place of God in a person's life is an idol. I'm the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. Once upon a time in the Middle East, out in a place called Egypt, it's a real place. People travel there every day. The Egyptians left behind all kinds of evidence to prove people once lived there. It's an amazing, amazing smart people, advanced, uh, the statues, the monuments, the temples, pyramids. They built thousands of uh, years ago, still standing. But the people gone, uh, like they disappeared into thin air. What happened to them? The last known writing we heard of the Egyptians was in the Bible. In fact, the Egyptians seen the glory of God. God gained his glory on them. If you, are, if you are not covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, you don't want to see the glory of God Almighty. <laughs> Amen. It'll be the last thing you see. People say they want to see God. No, you do not. If you ain't covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, you do not want to see him. Exodus 14, verses 1 through 31, Moses and the people. Uh, Moses and the people was by the sea. They had nowhere to go. Verse 4, the Lord said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And he will pursue them, but I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh. I told you when someone, when the Lord said I'm about to gain glory for myself through Pharaoh, all his army and the Egyptians would know that I am the Lord. The people looked up and saw Pharaoh with the great army and cried out to Moses. Moses told him, stand still and you will see the deliverance of the Lord he will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will see, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. All you need to do is be still. The Lord told Moses, raise your staff and stretch. I, I, I like to be Moses. You ready to lift his rod up, bread? Let's do it. Raise your staff and, and stretch out your and stretch out your hand to divide the sea, to divide the waters. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, the chariots and horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and horsemen. Moses and the people walked through the Red Sea on dry ground with a wall of water to the right and to the left. You're talking about being in the mercy of God. I don't, uh, but Moses and them came up and out the waters. The waters fell back on Pharaoh and all his army. Now one survived. I would have stayed away from these people. I don't want to go to the Sea House Aquarium. What, where? Let alone be between the sea. Can you fathom this? Exodus 33, verses 12 through 23, Moses said to the Lord, You've been telling me to lead these people, but you have not made known who you have sent with me. You said, uh, I know you by name, and I found, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your way so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you and remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I'll give you rest. Moses said to them, Mo, uh, then Moses said to him, "If your presence does not go with us, and do not send us from, do not send us from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and your people unless you go with us?" 
what else would distinguish me from your people, from all the other people on the face of the earth? I'm going to stop right there, because I'm going to get carried away. But Moses got to see the glory of the Lord. It's too much. Uh, the Egyptians, God gained his glory on them. Moses about to get to see the glory of the Lord. That's a wonderful thing. And even with that, it's too much. You'll see. Let me read the verses again. Exodus uh, 33, verse 12. I'm sorry, y'all. Bear with me. Exodus 33, verse 12. Though Jane ain't going to get carried away. Go verse by verse through the Bible and let the Lord do his thing. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know who you were sending with me. You said, You said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. Moses just asked God to teach him his ways. I thought he knew his ways. <laughs> we all got some learning to do. Yeah, include me. Moses said, I, you, <clears throat> Moses said, you have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you, and I'll give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How would anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I do the very thing you ask because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. And then Moses said, now show me your glory. <laughs> Moses didn't know who he was asking for. <laughs> show me your glory. <laughs> Boy, baby, it would have been the last thing you about to see almost. Uh, but when God pleased with you, you might get a chance. Uh, <laughs> Exodus 33, verse 17, and the Lord said to Moses, I do the very thing you ask because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness. <laughs> the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. And I will have mercy. I will have mercy on who I have mercy, and I will have compassion on who I have compassion. But he said, My face, but you cannot see my face. For no one can see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on the rock. When my glory passes by, I'll put you in the cleft in the rock and will cover you with my hand until I pass by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. The Lord said, I'm going to pass in front of you. I'm going to cause all my goodness to pass by you. I'm going to put you... <laughs> I'm going to put you in the cleft and the rice like a lug, like a crack in the wall. <laughs> because it's body. You can't survive. You can't survive going out in space without a space suit. You can't dive to the depths of the ocean without a, without a submarine. Let alone be in the presence of God. <laughs> you got to have a holy suit. Last time I checked, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Uh, to have the Holy Spirit is one thing, but you have to have a body like Jesus. Last time I checked, the Lord said he's going to give us a new body like his. We're going to be re resurrected one day when all this said and done. But you have to have a body just like Jesus to be in the presence of God. Your body can't take it. It's too much for you. God had to hide Moses in the rock and put his hand on him. Unless, the, unless, unless you are covered. If God's hand is not on you when he passed by, I believe... When the destroying angel passed through the Egyptian, the the, the the through Egypt, it was blood covering the door. If the blood of if the blood of God is not covering you, if the hand of God is not on you, when the Lord passed by, you are in a terrible spot. <clears throat> the Lord said, uh, "There's a place near me where you can stand on the rock when my glory passes by, and not put you in the cleft in the rock, and cover you with my hand until I pass by." Then I will remove my hand, and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Then the Lord said to Moses, Exodus 34, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones, and I'll write them, and I'll write on them the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and then come up on Mount Sinai, and present yourself to me there on top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Not even the flocks or herds may graze in front of the mountain. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first one and went up Mount Sinai early in the morning. 
as the Lord had commanded him, and he command and he carried the two stone tab tablets in his hand. Excuse me. Now. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses, uh, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not lead the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshiped. Lord, he said, if I found favor in your eyes, then let me then let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff necked people, forgive our wickedness and our sin and take us as your inheritance. Moses prayed for praying for the people. Then the Lord said, I'm making a covenant with you before all the people, and I will do one that's never before done in any nation in all the world. The people you live among will see how awesome is the work that I that I the Lord will do for you. Obey what I command you today. I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Justicites, whatever that is. And be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land where you are going, or there will be a snare to you, snare among you. Break, it, break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and cut down their aceropos. Do not worship any other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous god. Be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land. For when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to them, they will invite you and you will eat their sacrifices. And when you choose some of their daughters as wives for your sons and their daughters prostitute themselves to their gods, they will lead your sons to do the same thing. Do not make any idols. Celebrate the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. Eat bread made without yeast as I commanded you. Do this at the appointed time in the month of Aviv, for in that month you came out of Egypt. The first offspring of every womb belongs to me, including all the firstborn males of your livestock, whether from herd <coughs> or flock. Redeem the firstborn donkey with the land, but if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem all your firstborn sons. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Amen. Same thing today. No one is to appear before me empty-handed without holiness. Must have a... Uh, Except Lord Jesus Christ. Six days you shall labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Even during the plowing season and the harvest season, you must rest. Celebrate the festival of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the festival of in gathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year, all your men are to appear before the sovereign Lord, the God of Israel. I will drive out nations before you in the larger territory, and no one will cover your land when you go up three times a year to appear before the Lord your God. Do not offer the blood of a sacrifice to me among, along with anything containing yeast, and do not let any of the sacrifice from the Passover festival remain until morning. Bring the best of your first fruits of your soul to the house of the Lord your God. Do not cook a young goat in his mother's milk. <clears throat> then the Lord said to Moses, Write down these words, for in accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Moses was with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water. That's a long time. <laughs> uh, and he wrote, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. All right. The first time Moses got the Ten Commandments, he came down the mountain, he broke them. He prayed for his people. He asked God to teach him. Y'all listen to him. He just asked the Lord to teach him, teach him his ways. Um, Exodus 33, verse 12, verse 13. Moses said, if you please with me, Lord, teach me your ways. <laughs> you see, he asked God to teach him. Exodus 34, verse 29, say, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant of law in his hands, he was not aware. <laughs> he was not aware that his face was radiant. His face was lit up because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron, he had spoken with the Lord many times, but this time was different. <clears throat> when Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, then his face was radiant, uh, and they were, they were afraid to come near him. <laughs> But Moses called to him, so Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to him. 
Afterward, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them all the commandments the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. You see, the old order of things was passing away. Moses put a veil over, over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing that the old order of things is passing away and it's a new order of things coming. The veil is only removed when Jesus Christ take it off of the law. I got the junk. Uh, Y'all bear with me. Uh, give me a second, y'all. Because it goes to this. Second okay. yeah. Corinthians three, verse thirteen. You say, Second <clears throat> Corinthians verse chapter three, verse thirteen. Brother said, "We are not like Moses, who will put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away." But their minds were made dull, for to this very day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. Amen. Not just the faces, but their hearts. But, when any, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord, that is the whole purpose of God's law, to turn to, to, turn to the Lord and to repent. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. You see? Now the Lord is the spirit. John chapter 4, verse 24 say, God is a spirit, and those who worship must worship in spirit and in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Second Corinthians 3, verse uh, 17. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. And we all who and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image uh, with an ever increased in glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Amen. Moses face was lit up from seeing the glory of God directly, all his goodness, things to come. The people were afraid. So he had put a veil over his face until he had go back and speak with the Lord. Then he will remove it. The end of what was passing away, the old order of things and the new order of things was coming and has come. Amen. That was the point of Moses putting that veil over his face. I had to read that because it goes away. I'm sorry. But uh, no, I ain't. Hmm. It goes away. All right. Wait a minute. All right. Exodus 34, verse 33. Say, when Moses finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. <laughs> but whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he, re he removed the veil until he came out. <laughs> All right. And when he came out, he told the Israelites what he had been commanded. They saw that his face was radiant. <laughs> then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. Exodus 35 say, Moses assembled. Moses assembled the whole Israelite community and said to them, These are the things the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day shall be a holy day, a, a day of Sabbath rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it is to be put to death. Do not light a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. <laughs> I'm glad uh <laughs> Yeah, the whole point, uh, I'm glad uh, I explained that another day. <laughs> Y'all bear with me. <laughs> that was the case. We all be dead right now, bro. <laughs> God and his mercy. That's the whole point. It's a point to that. But uh, the Lord wanted us to rest. Exodus 35 verse 4 said, uh, Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who was willing to bring, I like that. Everyone who was willing to bring, not making people go to church, they, 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 if it ain't on your heart to give, you ain't got to give. But if it's on your heart, give. God love what you have to give. From what you uh, have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing to bring to the Lord an offering of gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, gold hair, ram skins, dyed red, another type of durable leather, Acacia wood, olive oil for, for the light, 
spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephrod and the breastplate. All who are skilled among you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle with its tent and its cover, the claps, the frames, the crossbars, the post, the base, the ark with its poles and the atonement cover and the curtain that shields it, the table with the spoles, and all the articles, and the bread of the presence, the lampstand that is for light with its accessories, lamps and oil for the light, <clears throat> the altar of incense, the altar of incense with the spoles, the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense, the curtain for the doorway at the entrance to the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its bronze, gratin, Exposed and all its utensils, the bronze basin with its stand, the curtain of the courtyard with its posts and bases, and the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the ten pads for the tabernacle and for the court courtyard, and their ropes, the woven garments worn for ministering and ministering in the sanctuary, both the sacred garments for Aaron, the priests, and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests. Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who who was willing, I like that, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved, then came and brought them an offering, and brought an offering to the Lord for the work of the tent of meeting, for all his services, and for uh, and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, I like that. All who were willing, God ain't gonna make you do anything. Yeah, ain't gonna make you do anything. All who were willing, man and woman alike, came and brought gold and jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earth uh, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or gold hair, ram dyed skin, or other durable leather, brought them. Those presenting the offering. A silver or bronze brought as an offering to the Lord, and everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the wood brought it. Every skilled woman, every skilled woman, spun with her hands and brought what she had spun: blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen. And all the women who were willing, I like that. And all the women who were willing and had the skill. Spun the gold hair. The leaders brought on stone, onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephrod and breastplate. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light and for the anointing oil and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing. <laughs> I like that woman part, man. I'm sorry. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work, uh, for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, 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 son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled them with the Spirit of God, Amen. with wisdom and understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze. God still got the ability to give people these things. I like that. He said, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled them with the Spirit of God, with wisdom and understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic crafts. And he has given both him and Olahab, son of Ahishkamak, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with the skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, designers, and embroiderers in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, and weavers, all of them. Exodus 36. Good morning, y'all. Exodus 36. Uh, say, skill work is another design. Uh, my bad. All of them skilled workers and designers. So Be Bezalel and Ohalia, I'm probably messing that name up, but oh well. And every skilled person to whom the Lord has given, and and to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constru construction, the sanctuary, 
are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given the ability and, whom, and who was willing. I like that. So Moses summoned Bezalel and, and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given the ability and to who was willing to come to, and do the work. They received from Moses all the offering the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of construction the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free, uh, free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left their... Uh, so all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and said to Moses, The people are bringing more than enough... <laughs> the people are bringing... <laughs> The people are bringing in, are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord has commanded to be done. Then Moses gave an order, and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because they, because what they had all, because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. <laughs> The tabernacle. All those who were skilled among the works among the workers made the tabernacle with ten curtain poles, a finely twisted linen and blue, <clears throat> purple and scarlet yarn, with cherubim woven into them by expert hands. All the curtains were in the same were the same size, twenty eight cubits long and four cubits wide. They joined five of the curtains together. And did the same with the other five. Then they made loops of blue material along the edge of the, of the end of the curtain in one set. And the same was done with the end curtain on, in the other set. They also made 50 loops on one curtain and 50 loops on the end curtain of the other set. With the loops opposite of each other. Then they made 50 gold clasps and used them to fasten two sets of curtains together. So, they, so that the tabernacle was a unit. They made curtains of gold hair for 10 for the tent over the tabernacle, eleven all together. Uh, all eleven curtains were the same size, thirty cubits long and four cubits wide. They joined five of the curtains into one set and the other six into another set. Then they made fifty loops along the edge of the end curtain in one set and also along the edge of the end curtain in another set. They made fifty bronze clasps to fat to fasten the tent together as a unit. Then they then they made for the tent a covering of ram skin dyed red, and all, and over that was a covering of the other durable leather. They made upright frames of acacia wood for the tabernacle. Each frame was ten cubits long and a cubit and a half wide, with two projections set parallel to each other. They made all the frames out of the tabernacle this way. This made. They made 20 frames for the south side of the tabernacle, and they made 40 silver bases to go under them, two bases for each frame, one under each projection. For the other side, the north side of the tabernacle, they made 20 frames, 40 silver bases, two under each frame. They made six frames for the far end, that is the west end of the tabernacle, and two frames were made for the corners of the tabernacle at the far end. At these two corners, the, the frames were doubled from the bottom all the way up to the top and fitted to a single ring. Both were made alike so that there were eight frames and 16 silver bases, two under each frame. They also made crossbars of acacia wood, five for the, five for the frames on the one side of the tabernacle, five for those on the other side, and five for the frames on the west at the far end of the tabernacle. They made the center crossbar so that it is thinner from the end to end at the at the so that it extended from the end to end at the middle of the frames. They overlaid the frames with gold and made gold rings to hold the crossbars. They also overlaid the crossbars with gold. They made the curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen with cherubim woven into it by a skilled worker. They made four posts of acacia wool for it and overlaid them with gold. They made gold hooks for them and cast their four silver bases. For the entrance of the tent, they made a curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. And they made five posts with hooks for them. They overlaid the tops of the posts and their bands with gold and, and made their five bases of bronze. Exodus 37, the ark. 
Bazalel made the Ark of Acacia wood two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. A cubit and a half high. Y'all bear with me, but I got to read this. Y'all. I don't want to leave nothing out. So y'all be patient with me. All right. He overlaid it with pure gold, both inside and out, and made a, a, a gold molding around it. He cast four gold rings for it and fastened them to the four, to its four feet, with two rings on one side and two rings on the other. Then he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold, and he inserted the poles into the rings of the sides of the ark to carry it. He made the atonement cover of pure gold, two and a half cubits long and a cubit and a half wide. Then he made two cherubim out of hammer, out of the hammer gold at the ends of the cover. He made one cherubim on one end and the second cherub on the other. At the two ends, he made them out of one piece with the cover. The cherubim had their wings spread upward, overshadowing the cover with them. The cherubim faced each other, looking toward the cover, the table. They made the table of acacia wood two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. And they overlaid it with pure gold and made a gold mold around it. They also made, uh, made a rounded rim of hand breath wide and put a gold molding on the rim. They cast four gold rings for the table and fastened them to the four corners where the four legs were. The rings were put close to the rim to hold the poles used to carry in the frame carrying the table. The poles for carrying the table were made of acacia wood and were overlaid with gold and they made them f- and they made from p- and they made from pure gold the articles for the table its plates and dishes and bowls and its pitchers and its pouring out for drink off them. The lampstand they made they made the lampstand of pure gold they hammered out of its base and shaft and made its flower like cups bud and blossoms of one piece with them six branches extended from the sides of the can of the lampstand three on one side three on the other side three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms were on one branch three on the next branch and the same for all six branches extended from the lampstand and the lampstands were four cups shaped like an almond flower with buds and blossoms one bud was under the first pair of branches extended from the lampstand, a second bud under the second pair, and a third bud, a third bud from under the third pair. Six branches and all the buds, the buds and the branches were all the, were all of one piece. With the lampstand hammering out of pure gold, they made its, they made its seven, seven lamps, as well as, as well as its wicks, tremors, and trays of pure gold. They made the lampstand and all its accessories from one tile and of pure gold, an altar of incense. They made the altar of incense out of acacia wood. It was square, a cubit long, and a cubit wide, with two cubits high. Its horns of one piece wood. They overlaid the top. They over the excuse me. They overlaid the top and all the sides of the horns with pure gold, and they made a, mo- a gold molding around it. They made two gold rings below with molding, below the molding, two on each of the opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. They also made the sacred anointing oil and the and the pure fragrant incense, the work of a perfume. Exodus thirty eight, uh, the altar of the altar of burnt offering. The altar of burnt offering of they built the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood, three cubits high. It was square, five cubits long, and five cubits wide. They made a horn at each of the four corners so that so that the horns and the altar were one piece. And they overlaid the altar with bronze. They made all its utensils of bronze. Its spots and shovels, sprinkling bowls, meat forks, and fire pans. They made a grand for the altar, a bronze network to be under its ledge, halfway up the altar. They cast bronze rings to hold the poles for the four corners of the bronze get granite. They made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze, and they inserted the poles into the rings so that they would be carried on the sides of the altar, so that they would be on the sides of the altar for carrying. They made a hollow out of boards, a basin, the basin for washing, 
they made a bronze basin and this bronze stand from the mayor. They made a they made the bronze basin and its bronze stand from the merits of the women who served at the entrance of the tent of meeting, the courtyard. The next day they made the courtyard. Next they made the courtyard. Y'all excuse. I know y'all don't y'all y'all just don't y'all don't understand a lot of this right now, but it'll relate to later on or something. I'll explain to y'all later on. It's a tabernacle junk that these people building and uh everything these people building I can't fathom <laughs> a, a quarter of what I just read to y'all to tell y'all the truth. But everything is a it's a it's a copy of what's up in heaven. Like as a it's a shadow of a copy was up in heaven with the Lord Jesus in. That's junk. Uh, we'll see it in the future one day. But anyway, back to the junk. I'm sorry. But I, I'm almost done, y'all. So y'all bear with me. <clears throat> Alright. God bless y'all. Uh, the courtyard. Next to me, the courtyard. The south side was 100 cubits long and had curtains of finely twisted linen. With 20 posts and 20 bronze bases and with silver hooks and bands on the posts. The north side was also 100 cubits long and had 20 posts and cubit, 20 bronze bases with silver hooks and bands on the post. The west end was 50 cubits wide and had curtains with 10 posts and 10 bases with silver hooks and bands on the base uh, and bands on the post. The east end toward the sunrise was also 50 cubits wide. Curtains 15 cubits long were on, were on one side of the entrance with three posts and three bases. And curtains 15 cubits long were on the other side of the entrance to the courtyard with three posts and three bases. All the curtains around the courtyard were a finely twisted linen. The bases for the posts were bronze. The hooks and bands on the posts were silver. And their tops were overlaid with silver, so that all the posts of the courtyard has, had silver band, silver bands. The curtain for the entrance to the courtyard was made of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. It was twenty cubits long, and like the curtains of the courtyard, five cubits high, with four posts and four bronze bases. Their hooks and bands were silver, and their tops were overlaid with silver. All the ten pegs of the tabernacle of the surrounding courtyard were bronze. The materials used. These are the amounts of the material used for the tabernacle. The tabernacle of the covenant of law that were recorded at that were recorded at Moses' command by the Levites under the direction of Ishmar, Ithamar, son of Aaron, the priest, Belazir, Bezalel, son of Ur, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah, made everything the Lord commanded Moses. With them was Oheliab, son of Ashmat, whatever that name is, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and designer, and an embroiderer in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen. The total amount of gold from the wave offering used for all the work of the sanctuary was 29 talents and 730 shekels, according to the sanctuary. Uh, shake them. Mm -hmm. I can knock that off for them. The silver obtained from those of the community who, the silver obtained from those of the community who were counted in the census was a hundred talents and one thousand seven hundred and seventy-five shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. One back up per person, that is half a shekel, according to the sanctuary shekel, from everyone who had crossed over to those county. Twenty years old or more, a total of 603,550 men. The 100 talents of silver were used to cast the bases for the sanctuary and for the curtain. 100 bases from the 100 talents, one talent for each base, they used... The 1,775 shekels to make the hooks for the posts and the overlay the tops of the posts and to make their bands. The bronze from the wave offering was 70 talents, 2,400 shekels. They used it to make the bases for the entrance of the tent meeting. The bronze altar with its bronze grating and all its utensils. The bases for surrounding the courtyard and those for the entrance and all the tent pegs for the tabernacle and those for the surrounding courtyard. 
Exodus 39 say priestly garments from the from the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, they made woven garments for ministering in the sanctuary. They also made sacred garments for Aaron, as the Lord commanded. One more time. We have two more chapters. Right. The ephrod. Uh, they made the ephrod of gold and of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and a fine twisted linen. They hammered out of the sheets of gold and and cut strands to be worked into to the blue, purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen, the work of skilled hands. They made shoulder pieces for the ephrod, which were to which were attached to two of its corners so that it could be fastened. Its skillfully woven waistband was like it. One of one of one piece with the ephrod and made with gold and with blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and with finely twisted linen. As the Lord commanded, they mounted the onyx stones, onyx stones and gold filigree settings and engraved them like a seal with the names of the sons of Israel. Then they fastened them on the on then they fastened them on the shoulder pieces of the ephrod as the memorial stones for the sons of Israel. As the Lord commanded, the breastplate, they fashioned the breastplate, the, uh, the work of a skilled craftsman. They made it like the ephrod of gold and the blue, purple and scarlet yarn. And a finely twisted linen. It was square, a span long and a span wide, and folded double. Then they mounted four rows of precious stones on it. The first row was carnelian, crystallite, and beryl. The second row was turquoise, turquoise, lapis lazuli, and emerald. The third row was jacinths, agate, and amethysts. The fourth row was topaz, onyx, and jasper. There they mounted. There, they were mounted in gold filigree settings. There, there were twelve. Uh, excuse me. There were twelve stones, one for each of the names of the sons of Israel, each engraved like a seal with the name of one of the of the tribe, twelve tribes. For the breastplate, breastplate, they had braided chains of pure gold like a rope. They made two gold filigree settings. Oh, excuse. Me. I'm almost done, y'all. Y'all be patient. Yeah. I know it's a lot. Yeah. But I gotta get through it. I'm gonna feel weird if I don't. All right. For the breastplate, they made chains of pure gold like a rope. They made two filigree settings, two gold rings and fasten the rings to the two of the corners of the breastplate. They fasten the two chains to the rings at the corners of, of the breastplate and the other ends of the chains on the two settings attached them to the shoulder pieces of the ephrod at the front. They made two gold rings and attached them to two other corners, to, to the two other corners of the breastplate on the inside edge next to the ephrod. Then they made two more gold rings and attached them to the bottom of the shoulder pieces on the front of the ephrod, close to the seam just above the waistband of the ephrod. They tied the rings of the breastplate to the rings of the ephrod with blue cord, connecting it to the waistband so that the breastplate would not swing out from the ephrod as the Lord commanded Moses. The other priestly garments. They made the robe of the ephrod entirely of blue cloth, the work of a waver, with an opening in the center of the robe like the opening of a collar, and a band around this opening, so that it would not tear. They made pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen around the hem of the robe, and they made bells of pure gold, and attached them to the hem between pomegranates. The bells and pomegranates alternated around the hem of the robe to be worn for ministering. As the Lord commanded Moses. For Aaron and his sons, they made tunics of fine linen, the work of a weaver, and the turban of fine linen, the linen caps and the undergarments of finely linen, twisted linen. The sash was made of finely twisted linen and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, the work of embroidery, as the Lord commanded Moses. They made the breast, they made the plate, the sacred em the sacred emblem out of pure gold and engraved on it 
like an inscription on a seal, holy to the Lord. Then they fastened the blue cord to it to attach it to the turban as the Lord commanded Moses. Moses inspect, inspected the tabernacle. So all the work of the tabernacle of meeting was completed. <laughs> That was a long jump. The reading the junk was a long jump for me. I can imagine that building the junk uh, or whatever. But yeah. So all of the work of the tabernacle, uh, the tent of meeting was completed. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent, and all its furnishings, its glass frames, crossbars, posts, and bases, the covering of ram, skin, dyed red, the covering of another durable leather, and the shielding curtain, the Ark of the Covenant law with its poles, and the atonement, atonement covering, the table with all its articles, and the bread of the presence. There's something significant about that bread of the presence. The pure gold lampstand with the... with its rows of lamps and all its accessories and the olive oil for the light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, the curtain for the tent, entrance to the tent, the bronze altar with this bronze grain, its poles and all its utensils, the basin with the stand, the curtains of the courtyard with its posts and bases and the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the ropes and the tent pegs for the court courtyard. All the furnishings for the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and the woven garments worn for ministering in the sanctuary, both the sacred garments for Aaron and the priests, uh, both the sacred garments for Aaron, the priests, and the garments for his sons when serving as priests. The Israelites had done all the work just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses inspected the work and saw that, that all they Moses inspected the work and saw that they had done it just as the Lord had commanded. So Moses blessed them. I mean, if you did all get all that done, bro, I'm glad they got it wrote down. Cause I'd have been looking the whole time, like <laughs> I'd have had a look in my face, like, Lord, I'm glad you got these people who gave them to know how to do this stuff. Cause you lost me, bro. But I'm here with you, though. You know, I'm, I'm aiming to please you. But uh, all right, Exodus 40, man. Say, uh, got that out the way. God bless y'all. If anyone rock with me through that. <laughs> but not everything. Always. Uh, I'm going verse by verse. Let God speak through the way he wrote the book. <laughs> I can pick and choose and read stuff, but I'm not going to do that. Exodus 40, verse 1. Say, then, Moses, then the Lord said to Moses, Set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, on the first day of the month. Place the... Place the Ark of the Covenant law in it and shield the Ark uh, with the curtain. Bring in a table and set out what belongs on it. Then bring in the lampstand and set up the, its lamps. Place the gold altar of incense in front of the Ark. Of the, excuse me. Place the, place, the gold altar, place the gold altar of incense in front of the Ark of the Covenant law and put the curtain at the entrance to the ta tabernacle. Place the altar, a burnt offering, in front of the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Set up the courtyard around it and put the curtain at the, at the entrance to the courtyard. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. I like that. Same thing. I explain that for another day. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it and all its furnishings and it will be holy. Then anoint the altar, a burnt offering, and all its utensils. Consecrate the altar and it will be most holy. Anoint the basin and its stands and consecrate, it. consecrate them. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then dress Aaron in the sacred garments and anoint him and consecrate him so that he may serve me as priest. Bring his sons and dress them in tunics and anoint them just as you were anointed, just as you anointed their father, so that they may serve me as priests. Their anointing will be a priesthood that will continue throughout their generations. Moses did everything just as the Lord had commanded. So the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the month in the second year. When Moses set up the tabernacle, he put the bases in place, erected the frames, inserted the crossbars, and set up the posts. 
Then he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering over the tent as the Lord commanded him. He took the, ta the tablets of the covenant law and placed them in the ark, attached the, attached the poles to the ark and put the atonement cover over it. Then he brought the ark into the tabernacle and hung the, sh the shield and curtains and shielded the ark of the covenant law as the Lord commanded him. Moses placed the... And Moses placed the, ta the table in the tent of meeting on the, on the north side of the tabernacle outside the garden and set out the bread on it before the Lord as the Lord commanded him. He placed the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle and set, up <coughs> and set up lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded him. Moses placed the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the curtain and burn fragrant incense on it as the Lord commanded him. Then he put up a curtain, then he put up the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle, and he set the altar burn offering near the entrance to the to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and offered on it burnt offerings and grain offerings as the Lord commanded him. He placed the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing. And Moses and Aaron and his son used it to wash their hands and their feet. They wash they washed whenever they entered the tent of meeting or approached the altar, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle. Uh, then Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and altar and put up the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. And so Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had set on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. <laughs> and all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted up from, a, from the tabernacle, they were set out. But whenever the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud, so the cloud of the Lord. I like that. The cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night. In the sight of all the Israelites' community, in the sight of all the Israelites during their travels, it says these people, it said they followed the Lord wherever. If the Lord, they didn't see that cloud moving, <laughs> they didn't move neither. They was following God. God was uh, leading them. Yeah, you led by the Holy Spirit, and. The Holy Spirit led them in the cloud of pillar by day and the fire by night. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to stop there and pick up at uh, Leviticus tomorrow. I had to go through that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, no, I ain't. We got to go verse by verse through the book. And uh, stop there and pick up tomorrow at Leviticus 1. It's a day by day thing, y'all. Ain't nothing. You know, not everything gonna make sense all the time. Where right. you ain't gonna get all the answers all the time. <laughs> you ain't gonna get. You ain't gonna if you pay attention. And if you rocking with me, good morning, Nunch. I see. If you pay attention, uh, if you pay attention and rocking with me, and next to this twenty-three. Uh, Exodus 23, verse 30. The Lord told the people, I'm going to send my angel ahead of y'all to bring y'all to the place. Little by little, verse 30, I'm going to drive them out. The Lord going to do stuff for us little by little, y'all. Ain't everything going to be a big 24 dramatic thing. You don't get step two until you uh, apply step one. The Lord told Abraham in Genesis 12, go from your country. From your father's household to the place I'm going to show you. Abraham ain't even know where he was going. The Bible says Abraham ain't know where he was going. He just got up and left. You don't get step two until you take step one. Step one, just take God at his word. And let's, let's keep doing that. In the beginning, John chapter one, say it all start with God's word. In the beginning was the word. You keep taking God at his word. And everything going to make sense at that. We keep taking God at his word, y'all. Day by day. Y'all be patient. Keep asking the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Um, I hope the Lord, peace of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I hope it guards your, your heart and your mind. Cast your cares and anxiety upon him, the Bible says. Right. Rejoice in the Lord.
day by day, man. And some, some, and some is some you can't explain for real. For you say you can't. The words say you can't explain. The peace of God will guard your heart, will transcends all understanding. Uh, you can't even explain it. What is something about God's word? Um, let your heart and your mind dwell with the rich. Try to stay centered that most as you can. That's the key, man. If you can get that down back. Where? Right. Yeah. in a good spot. I love y'all. Y'all keep praying for me. I keep praying for y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Amen.